Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. As the month of Ramadan begins, can I take this opportunity to wish all Muslims in Scotland and across the UK a very peaceful holy month? The First Minister's party said this when asked by journalists just last month if they had lost 30,000 members. As the SNP clearly stated when asked, fewer than 300 members have left the party over the period. The quote continued, this story is both malicious and wholly inaccurate. Fortunately, few people are gullible enough to believe it. It's since emerged that the story is 100% correct. So why did Nicola Sturgeon's party, the party of government in this parliament, lie to the press and the public? Yeah. On matters for which the government has general responsibility, First Minister. Uh, presiding officer, can I begin by uh, wishing Ramadan Mubarak uh, to our Muslim community? I think I am in the very privileged position uh, of having, uh, of any constituency in the country, the highest proportion of Muslims uh, living within my Glasgow Southside uh, constituency. I know the holy month of Ramadan is a very special time uh, for Muslims, uh, and I wish them uh, all the best uh, during it. Um, on the issue of SNP uh, members, that issue has been uh, well canvassed over the last few days. I've got uh, nothing to add to what I have already said, except this, presiding officer. Uh, the SNP remains the only mass membership party yeah. in this country. Yeah. We have by far more members than any other party represented in this chamber. And I think, presiding officer, I can say with some confidence that the SNP has more members than all other parties in this chamber combined. However, I can't say that with absolute certainty. So let me say this finally to Douglas Ross. If he wants a conversation, a debate, an interaction about party membership figures, then that surely should be a meaningful one where we can compare and contrast. So before we go any further, will Douglas Ross share with the Chamber how many members his party has? Douglas Ross. I thought it's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting Thank you. that the First Minister. Thank you. Members, excuse me, we will hear Mr. Ross. It's very interesting that the First Minister speaks about confidence in numbers because those seeking to replace her had no confidence in the numbers her party's chief executive and her head of communications issued to the press. And this is an important issue here in the Scottish Parliament. This is an important issue here in the Scottish Parliament. Excuse me, Mr Ross. Um, Mr Ross is seeking to ask a question of the First Minister. Can we please do Mr Ross the courtesy of listening? Thank you. Mr Ross. And, and this is an important issue here in the Scottish Parliament for the Scottish Government. Because they lied. They lied to the press and they lied to the public. That is absolutely clear. And Nicola Sturgeon is Ms. treating Ms. the Scottish Ms. public like Mr. idiots Ross. with Mr. this embarrassing Sorry. defence. Mr Ross, if I could just remind you of the requirement of all members to treat one another with courtesy and respect yeah. at all times. No, I... And, and, and of what, no, not only I, but my predecessors, those who have um, you know, sat in this chair before me, have said with regards to the use of particular language in the chamber. But I think everyone has accepted that the SNP lied over these figures. And the defence the defense from Ross. Nicola Sturgeon Mr. is Ross. embarrassing. The, yeah, the SNP and their story went on like this. They said, you don't have points of order. You don't have points of order during First Minister's questions. The SNP um, said the story... First of all, I will decide when we are and are not taking points of order. However, as is established convention, I will not be taking a point of order until the end of this session. Mr Ross. Well, they, they don't seem to want to hear this, and I wonder why, uh, presiding officer, because the SNP's story on these figures continued that the 
that the impression in the media was flat wrong. It was malicious and wholly inaccurate. They went on to say nobody was gullible enough to believe the reported reduction of 30,000 SNP members. But the truth is the SNP, the SNP is a party, did lie. That's why their chief executive and the head of communications has resigned. So why would anybody be gullible enough to believe that Nicola Sturgeon was unaware of what her chief executive and the most senior members of her own party were up to? Uh, before the First Minister begins, I will remind all members of the requirement in this chamber. We do not use the word lie in this chamber. First Minister. Setting officer, I, I think the only character that is being revealed in this chamber today is that of Douglas Ross. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Douglas Ross, as leader of the opposition, uh, no doubt uh, going to be a very long-standing leader of the opposition. Uh, well, unless his party has something to say about that. He, he chooses the topics uh, that he raises, and that is absolutely right and proper. But let it be noted uh, today uh, for the people watching right now that on this, my last appearance as First Minister at First Minister's Questions, Douglas Ross is not asking me about the National Health Service or education <laughs> or the economy uh, or climate justice. Uh, but this is the topic he has chosen, party membership figures. So that is fine. But if we are to have a proper interaction, a proper, I don't think Conservatives, yeah, given yesterday's <laughs> events in the House of Commons, should be lecturing anyone about honesty and integrity. But coming back, presiding officer, if we are Thank to you. have a debate about party membership figures, then before we go any further, perhaps Douglas Ross would answer the question that I posed last time and that we're still waiting for an answer on. How many members does the Scottish Conservative Party have? Surely he knows. Tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicola Sturgeon started a week early. When you're on the back benches, you get to ask the questions at FMQs. In your final one, uh, you're supposed to answer. Now, the First Minister's farewell tour this week has been a masterclass in deceit and political spin. She was too busy, far too busy, to appear in front of the Scottish Affairs Select Committee, but somehow, somehow managed to eke, up, eke out time in her schedule to sit down and loose women to debate the great offices of state and the matters of state with Janet Street Porter. She says her party is experiencing growing pains. This must be the first time that growing pains have actually shrunk something. She claims that she's left her successor a brilliant foundation. First Minister, Mr. that's Ross. all that's left. Mr. The foundation, Ross. the Mr. house that Sturgeon, Salmond and Murrell... Sorry, I'm finding it very difficult to hear you from here. I would be grateful if we could hear one member at a time and only those members who I've called. Mr Ross. I, I was just saying how the First Minister claimed to have left her successor with a brilliant foundation, but that's all that's left. The foundation, the house that Sturgeon, Salmond and Murrell built is collapsing. And the SNP have said it themselves. Party President Mike Russell admitted this week they are in a tremendous mess. First Minister, he's right, isn't he? First Minister. Well, firstly, if he wants, if he wants to know about collapsing uh, political parties, he should look at a, a poll about leaders' favourability yeah. ratings published this very morning. It does not make happy reading for Douglas Ross. Uh, but on the issue of priorities, uh, presiding officer, and these are not the issues I would have chosen to go on today, but Douglas Ross has chosen them. So if he wants to talk about priorities, let me point out that I am not the member of this parliament that missed a veterans event to referee a yeah, football match. Thank you. Secondly, on that point, presiding officer, I am not accountable to the House of Commons. I am accountable to this yeah. parliament. I know Douglas Ross has difficulty deciding which parliament is more important to Scotland because he's got one foot in each. But I know which parliament is most important to Scotland and it is this one, our Scottish parliament. And finally, presiding officer, 
I am proud. I am proud of the record of the government I have led through some of the toughest times Scotland has faced in recent history. But ultimately, the only people uh, who will cast a verdict uh, on the record of my or future government are the people of Scotland. And in my time as First Minister, they have had eight opportunities to do that. And on each of these eight opportunities, they have voted for me, for the SNP and for my government. That's a record I'm very proud to stand on. Douglas Ross. Well, if the First Minister is proud of her record in government, if the First Minister is proud of her record in government, let's just look at it. In her final FMQs, let's just go over it. On Nicola Sturgeon's watch. We will hear Mr on, Ross, thank you. On Nicola Sturgeon's watch, Scotland schools have plummeted down international league tables. Mm -hmm. She has made no progress on the attainment gap and broke her promise to close it completely. The Name Persons Act, the Hate Crime Act, the Gender Recognition Bill were all unworkable. Drug deaths in Scotland are the highest in Europe, five times greater than anywhere else in the United Kingdom. And right now, at this moment, one in seven Scots is on an NHS waiting list. And on her final day in this chamber as First Minister, a cross-party committee of this Parliament delivered a damning report on ferries. They found that Nicola Sturgeon personally intervened to prioritise vanity over vessels, leading to huge delays and costing the taxpayers hundreds of millions of pounds. On these and so many other issues, Nicola Sturgeon ignored Scotland's priorities in favour of her obsession with independence. She divided our country and failed on every mission she set herself. First Minister, isn't that the truth of your legacy? First Minister, presiding officer for Douglas Ross, that has not been at any point in my time as First Minister the verdict of the Scottish yeah, people. Yeah, eight election victories in eight years as First Minister, that's the verdict that matters to me. But let's look and my record as First Minister, progressive income tax, the Scottish child payment, lifting children out of poverty, the baby box, closing the attainment gap, record numbers of people like, from backgrounds like mine going to university, a National Investment Bank leading the way in climate change, abolishing prescription charges, minimum unit pricing, saving lives, record high health funding, the best performing accident emergency departments anywhere in the UK, the Domestic Abuse Act, free period products, expanded, doubled childcare, the promise for care experience you. young people, the highest level of school spend per pupil anywhere in the UK, the highest number of teachers per head, 8% more teachers uh, now than when I became First Minister, free tuition uh, for higher education, free bus travel uh, for those under 22. I could go on and on and on, but I'm not going to because this is my last session of First Minister's Questions. Question number two, Anna Sarwar.